Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. We're uh, still in Hyde's Tower of Flame. We're actually in the Tower of Flame itself after we've killed the Dragon Rider. And speaking about dragons, we need to head towards that cathedral over there and there's a dragon sleeping right outside it. But first, Let's check out the soul of the dragon rider. Soul of a dragon rider who faithfully served King Vendrick. Long ago, the dragon riders mounted worms and were feared on the battlefield for their unparalleled strength. So, uh, the dragon riders were, uh, well, knights of King Vendrick. And they, well, like their namesake, of course, rode dragons, rode worms. And that's why there's one right over there. So, makes sense, makes sense. Because that dragon wasn't there in the original version, so they added it uh, in this one. But for now, it makes sense that there's a dragon here, because there's a dragon riding in the tower. Let's talk to this lady. Are you from these parts? My name is Lysia. I have come to spread the art of miracles, a practice of which I am a disciple. I can see that you are well suited to comprehend their wondrous power. But the cost of it... That's for your heart to decide. The cost of it, that's for your heart to decide. Let's talk a bit further to Lysia. I'd heard awful rumors about this place, and I'm afraid they were all true. The king, gone. The earth, ravaged. The burden on the people weighs heavy. I fear that, by now, they may have scarce room in their hearts for miracles. So basically, she sells us miracles. Why did I come here? Well... Do I need any other reason than to spread the gospel of miracles? My preceptor always said this art should be shared with the world. And such is my only wish. So it seems like she's a pretty nice woman, right? She just wants to sell us miracles and spread the word. Sometimes I fight the urge to pack up and go back home. It is... Well... I must do this. And being out here all alone only makes this a more fitting test of my fortitude. I expected this cathedral to be bustling, but there's hardly a soul to be found here. Without any goings on, I'll have to move soon. To a place I could gull the... Sorry, help the gullible by teaching the good word. <laughs> so there we go, a first hint that there's not something, there's something not quite right with this woman. So Lysia of Lindold. So she sells the Cleric Sacred Chime, and then of course sells the uh, Ring of Prayer, increases faith, and then a whole bunch of miracles you could purchase. But most of them are actually out of my faith range, even though she says I'm well equipped to use them, but I don't think I can actually use a single one of these miracles. No, I need at least 12 faith, so uh, moving on. No need for miracles. The gods frown upon such soul scrimpers. So, uh, when we go back down here, these Hyde Knights seems to be really active. Just gonna check him out a bit. There we go, got a parry off, and then he sits down, and I can just stab him in the heart. And then circle around him a bit. Okay. And there we go, got a backstab in there as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty tough bastards, these uh, Hyde Knights, so that's what they're called. Just gonna dual wield for this guy. Smack. Oh, he smacked the third time. There we go. And let's pick up a cracked blue eyed orb. But with that guy gone, uh, I'm actually able to open up this chest. And it contains a pretty, pretty nice ring, actually. So let's check that out. And there we have the Ring of Binding that's still there, which is nice. So the Ring of Binding, an unusual ring of unknown origin, limits the wearer's HP reduction when hollow. Alas, this ring will not make you human. What is lost is not easily retrieved. So the Ring of Binding actually reduces your, um, well, increases your maximum health when you're hollowed. So usually you will drop down to 50% if you're hollowed. 
but uh, with that ring you only drop down to 75. I thought there was another hide knight over here, but I might be wrong. Oh, he's wandering over there. Oh, there's two coming already. And the third swipe, and then whop, 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 whop. There we go. Just gonna move back a bit so we can fight this guy as well. There we go. So, hide knight incoming as well. And now, ooh, there's another big guy coming. So we need to be careful here, because we need to kill these guys one at a time. Okay, that took me way too long. This is gonna be a bitch. So I'm going through my life gems, but I really want to do this section at least once so I can take out the dragon. Man, there's a lot of enemies in this version. So there's two more hide knights and a big knight. Seems like they're both coming for me, which is annoying. There we go. And then dual wield. And there we go. Okay. Getting the hang of this a bit. Only spent one life gem there. Now the other big guy, without triggering the hide knight up the stairs, please. Hey there. Hello. Oh. Come on, buddy. Oh, he has a spear. I'm not this. There you go. Come on, fall off. There you go. Backstab. Dual wield, and then. Oh, what the fuck? Ooh, that was way too close. That was way too close. Shouldn't have done that. Just gonna let my health come back a bit. Okay, so now... There's a dragon in our way. So we need to run this, I suppose. Ooh. I'm gonna suppose I just need to whack it. Oh, that was, yeah, I just went under his foot there. Just need to be careful not to fall off here. Ow, did that get me there? And there we go. Dragon taken down. You can see, look at that, you can see that now we're over there again. So let's pick that up. Petrified Dragon Bone and the Watch Dragon Parm. I actually want to check out the shield. A shield decorated by intertwined dragons. The black and white contrast depicts the ebb and flow of the fate of all things living and the serpentine dragons that watch over the march of time. The bearer of the shield will be blessed by great fortune in battle. Interesting. So does that mean it actually increases item discovery or something like that? Might be. So let's open this up. And I'm actually wondering whether I can do this with my current sword. Because it's uh, pretty worn at the moment. Just going to use one more life gem. There we go. And open up the chest at the, yeah, at the entrance here. Because that also gives us a bit of things. Cathedral of Blue. And yeah, I told you guys there's a lot of boss fights in this game. It's a, this is just one of them again. Get another... Effigy and an old radiant life gem. Let's not use that just yet and head in here and face our next challenge. Hello, Ornstein. Ornstein. Ow. That was not a good idea. Just block it. Oh, looks like Ornstein got some tricks from uh, Smile there. We got him staggered. Uh, 
Come on, Einstein. The old dragon slayer. And there we go. Another one where he's wide open. He is defended during that stage, though. As you can see, his defense is a lot higher when he's uh, just waiting for me to do something. He's gonna lunge at me normally. Or just fire some stuff. Dark electricity. There we go. And look at that. He's defended for that first. Yeah, my longsword is almost down. So I need to kill him in the next few hits. Which is fine. There we go. Not the hardest boss in the game, but uh, there we go. All Dragon Slayer down. So that this, they did make this a lot harder by adding a boatload of enemies outside the door. That was ridiculous. But 28,000 souls and we got his soul and the old Leo ring. Let's check that out. The old dragon slayer is reminiscent of a certain knight that appears in old legends. Uh, so there's two things you can try and deduce from this. Either this is a knight that tried to mimic Ornstein from Dark, Soul, Dark Souls 1. But since the release of Dark Souls 3, there's actually another interesting theory about this. Because in Dark Souls 3, there was talk about an alternative timeline where Ornstein didn't die in Dark Souls 1 and left Anno Londo to go with the Nameless King. And I feel like this fits better that he was on his way towards the Nameless King and just ended up here which also explains why there's a dragon outside of the door outside of the door of the guy that's called the dragon slayer but uh ornstein wanted to go with the nameless king who actually allied with the dragons so he changed his mind so he still bore the title of dragon slayer but uh yeah he wasn't doing that anymore he even made friends with a few of them that's why there's one outside the door I feel like that's more of an interesting theory than uh, just saying, oh, they fucked up. They put the dragon outside of the dragon slayer. Uh, and then, of course, the Leo ring. I almost forgot about that. Because the Leo ring actually increases... Yeah, increases trust weapon counterattack damage. The beloved ring of a dragon slaying knight. After many years of use, the ring's face has worn down. But close inspection reveals an engraved lion. So just indicating that this was also the ring of Ornstein. And then we have this guy over here. Let's have a little chat with him overlooking the ruins of this uh, once great city. Transient being. This is no place for one such as you. Be gone. You are not needed. So apparently this guy doesn't want to talk to lovely Bob. Transient being. Nothing has changed. You would never make a knight of the blue. And I have nothing more to say. Be gone. You are not needed. I would not make a knight of blue. Have you seen my haircut? Transient be. You would never make. Be gone. So yeah, there's a requirement for this. I can't actually remember what we need to do for this. I would like this guy's armor, but I don't think you get it even if you kill him. So let's just check out the two chests next to him. And try not to hit anything with our sword because it's almost broken. The Cleric's Parma and the Tower Shield. And then we get... So the Tower Shield is our first Great Shield. And then this one is... Yeah, another three cracked blue eye orbs. So that we can use that to help out people. I don't think there's actually anything here, no. Okay, therefore try tongue. Very mature. And then if we go down here, there is normally just a bonfire, if I'm not mistaken. But not much else. Because I don't think there's any illusory walls in here. So with the old dragon slayer down, there's also one more thing I wanted to do in the forest of fallen giants. So we're back here. And I just want to take out these guys. So if you go down here, there's actually another area you can access if you're careful. But I do want to take out the enemies up top first. And then we'll move towards those a that area down there. So there we go. Oh god! I got tossed over there. <laughs> yeah, that was a, an impressive death. It's also high time to equip that uh, ring of burden, uh, bind, binding, binding, ring of binding. There we go. Just to mitigate that effect a bit, I could actually go out here, but I don't want to trigger the fire bomber. 
Oh, I can actually open up this door over here as well. Kind of forgot about that. Let's just go down here then first. Don't actually remember what is here. It is pretty dark. Like, really dark. Oh, wow, skeletons. Interesting. Uh, okay, souls are whirling around me. That was a bit weird. So this is another skeleton. There we go. Oh, that's a... Is that a pressure plate? I do take care of these guys rather quickly. But it is really dark, so let's just move along. There we go. That's a... Interesting. Human effigy. Interesting as well. That a skeleton would hold a human effigy. And we get a torch. That was... That was interesting. Oh yeah, I do remember this area vaguely. So there's an archer over there. And I can't really reach him right now. Then there's also this big knight over there. There we go. go. Priorities. There we go. Okay. Getting the hang of this. Getting the hang of this. Let's just go in here. And then out here. Drop the arrow and whack him in the face. Oh. 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 Um. Invaded by Armory Dennis. Why? Oh, Jesus, motherfucker. That doesn't look like an armory. There we go. And then two hand on the way up. Okay. Why is he not staggered by, by attacks? Ooh, what the hell is that? Seems like a tornado. Oh, wow. Sword, big sword. There we go. Invader banished. I feel like he actually damaged me somehow. Dark Spirit Armory Dennis has been vanquished. And we got another human effigy for that. That was interesting. Don't even know if that... Invasion is supposed to be there in the base game. And we get another giant. Huh. This guy has a seed. Seed of the Tree of Giants. So that's an item that was in Dark Souls 3 as well. A lump of something obtainable from a giant tree makes enemies react to invaders. When the giants fell, they grew into great trees. Death is not the end. For anything that has ever once lived remains a part of a great cycle of regeneration. But what of those outside of the cycle? Interesting. Those outside of the cycle. So yeah, the, the Souls games are always about cycles, right? A cycle of uh, fire and dark. A cycle of uh, undead and regeneration constantly. Oh, there's actually a bonfire in here. Just gonna light it and maybe even rest at it, because that invasion took a lot out of me. Nullify human effigies effect. Why would I want to do that? Another chest with a large soul of a proud knight, a hunter's hat and leather armor. I mean, the hunter's hat looks cool. It looks, it looks really cool. But I feel like my uh, iron helmet will be of more protection, my falconer's helmet. Oh god, there's like four of them. Ow. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get up here. Let's go down here. Move past this guy. This is ridiculous. Up oh, over the wall. Move, move. Ow, ow, move, move, move. Push each other off. No, seriously. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Those are the skeletons. Um, let's get into the skeleton zone. Ow. 
Run! This is bad. This is bad. Is that door closed? No, it's not closed. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, those are still coming. Those are still coming. Uh, there's one guy over here. Those guys do not have a tether. Although, they do. Damn, you, there's a lot of these guys. I don't even know, are they still leaving? Oh, no, they're gone, they're gone. Okay, this is gonna be an interesting episode. <laughs> A cavalcade of armored knights. Um, so yeah, they really stepped up their numbers game. That's ridiculous how many of those there were. Just gonna climb up, actually. There doesn't seem to be any here. Which makes me wonder whether there were a few here and they just all dropped down. A bastard sword. Ooh, that might be my new favorite sword. We might be able to swap out the fire longsword if we ever get out of here, that is. And then the last one. Get up here, you big beluka. There we go. Two pokes and he's down and my sword is all all already crumbling again. Uh, I don't think there's anything... No. Okay, that means we can now safely explore whatever else is here. And I think... Is that actually... Accessible? Doesn't seem like it. This is not even the the, uh, the area that I wanted to explore, but here we are. So, if we were back at that upper ramp, I'm just gonna block a bit because there's a few arches. Of, ow. And while I say a few arches, there seem to be a few, quite a lot of them. There we go. After a few tries, you can actually jump up there. And then just keep my shield up because there's a lot of those archer dudes. And it keeps the shield up for some reason. Okay, so let's just go for the first archer. Block that. Apparently not. Let's just use a life gem. And keep moving further. Because in here we should be protected for a bit. Uh, we get more torches. My sword is almost broken again. And I think I might be able to swap that out for something else in a second. So now we can jump over there. Cross the area while still getting pelted with arrows. Don't think there's anything behind us. Nope. So let's just go up first and get that archer. Although there doesn't seem to be anything of interest and I need to drop down. So I'm just going to go back. So let's go into this cave. Should be clear of archers. And then, uh, yeah, there's this big boulder that just passes by and kills something. And we get more human effigies. But there is also another character up here that we can talk to. It's weird, doesn't look like he actually pulled the boulder down, but uh, might have just come loose from over here because he was rummaging around over there, but oh, let's talk to him. I'm sorry. I was just daydreaming, I think. My name is Kale. I'm a traveler like yourself. I'm navigating the continent to create a map. Why cartography, you ask? Well, uh, that's a good question. When I first came into this forsaken land, it was... Um, uh, uh, a curse? Uh, something about a curse? <laughs> How embarrassing. I seem to have lost my focus. But I do know one thing for certain. I have always been very fond of maps. So that's an interesting indication there. People seem to lose their focus, seem to lose their goal. Because uh, our current goal seems to be to find King Vendrick and talk to him and become the new monarch. But that is not why we came to Drang Lake. We came to Drang Lake because we wanted the curse from uh, a, a cure 
from the uh, undead curse. But somehow, along the way, we've already forgotten why we're here. And that is interesting. I came to this land some time ago. Dranglik, the lost kingdom. It sounded so romantic. Have you seen Majula? Oh, there's a rather spacious mansion there. I made it my temporary home. Well, as something of a squatter, I'm afraid. So there we go, the big house in Majula is actually, well, his kind of property, not property, he's squatting there, so uh, he just broke in. Inside the mansion, I found a strange map, like none I'd ever seen. I believe that it's a map of Dren Lake. Now I'm traveling the land to prove it. Yes, yes, that's it. That's why I came to the kingdom. Wait, no, that wasn't it. So yeah, Kale also forgot about his recall. original goal. He wanted to cure his undead curse, but along the way he forgot. Were you looking for that map? Wonderful. Then you are fascinated by maps, just like me. Sure we are, mate. Shame on you. You should have told me before. Here, take this. A key to the mansion. And there we go. That's all we needed. A joy to meet a kindred spirit out here. A fellow map guy, but yeah, we just wanted a key. Hello! Goodbye. Kind of made that a bit more dramatic, but uh, there we go. See, little touches like that speak to the strength of um, Dark Souls 2 as a whole. I'm just going to go back to Majula now and we'll check out the mansion. So, there we go. I forgot to uh, send Melentia to uh, Majula as well, so... She's on uh, her way now, so they don't disappear like they do in Dark Souls 3. They just say, yeah, it's high time I pack up and move. So let's go to Majula. And there we go, she's already gone. So back in Majula, you can see Melentia sitting here already. So uh, now she's our merchant right here in Majula at home. Oh, you again. Go on, it's on the cheap for you. <laughs> Yeah, if you say so. So, we already bought the Faros Lockstone in between, so uh, this thing, I already bought that from her. We can use that a bit later on. And I think if we talk to her... Everyone's so stingy around here. Everyone's so stingy everywhere. You're my only customer. Don't make me beg, now buy something. We call this place Majula. Not too special, if you ask me. It's just a place where everyone seems to end up. <laughs> and there's actually a reason for that. Everyone's so... You're my lowly cup. So, uh, but before we realize what that reason is, let's just head into the mansion over there. Because now that we have the key, we can just open that up. There we go, used the house key. And then the first room we enter actually has this little bit of a library with one huge book. Look at that. Can't sadly read anything what's in the book, not even on the, the more special editions on PC. And we get another Faros Lockstone. You can actually check that out. So Faros Lockstone stone activating a creation of Faros the Vagabond. Faros the Vagabond was a legend who wandered the lands, creating contraptions to help those in sincere and dire need. The scope of his travels was so wide that Faros has been mistakenly credited with many inventions that were crafted by others. So interesting. He was such a famous person that even for smaller inventions that other people made, uh, he was actually credited for it while he didn't actually make it. So there's an upper floor and a lower floor to this thing. So there's a basement and an upper floor. But we'll check out the basement first. And if I recall correctly, there should be... Yeah, so this is the map. This thing on the floor is the map that Kale was talking about. So this is the map of Drang Lake with just one bit of flame over here. Because this, if I'm not mistaken, this is supposed to be Majula. So right next to the sea and the rest is the land of Drang Lake. And long, while we're going along the game, 
uh, every time we defeat a major boss, another flame will light on the map. So that's cool. But then the basement itself is uh, home to a skeleton that's just gonna die immediately. Uh, I think there might... Is there only one? I know if you do this too early, the skeleton is like a huge challenge. I don't feel like it is now. And there we have an Estus Flask shard. And then there's one more chest over here. And that contains, it does also contain human effigies? No, soul vessel. So soul vessel is an item you can use to redistribute your souls if you go back to the, the, the fire keepers at the beginning of the game. And then the last interesting thing that a lot of people overlooked at the beginning when this game was first released are these shards on the floor. So, vision of something, by the way, hooray for master. So this is actually the Lord Vessel from Dark Souls 1. The big bowl where you put the giant souls into at the end of the game to open up the pot to Gwyn. This is the Lord Vessel and it's kind of probably the reason why people feel attracted to Majula. Because they just want to go down here and find the original place where the, the fire was linked. But uh, yeah, people don't seem to realize why they like to be here. And there's another staircase over here, so let's head up. And there's one chest here in the corner. So let's open that up and get our final three Titanite shards and three torches. So we have quite a bit of torches now. I think I might have accidentally triggered the pigs. It sounded really angry while I was walking inside of the house. No? Okay, fair enough. But we did get a new sword, the Bastard Sword. It is a bit heavy. But if I remove the bow, no, I'm just not ready for that maybe swap out the life ring how much difference does the life ring actually make so i'm at 1209 oh that is absolutely nothing 50 hp yeah let's just get ring rid of the ring but that doesn't do it either so it's 0 0.2 the ring of restoration however is pretty heavy so i'm just gonna remove that for now so the bastard sword is a, a longer sword which you have a few of these stacks, and then you have, I think you have an overhead slash as well. There we go. And it is pretty strong as well, so let's just upgrade that a bit. And with all the Titanite shards we have, we have enough to put them up to plus three. But I'm lacking the souls to actually put it to plus four, which I could technically also do, but it's gonna have to wait. With that Estus Floss shark, we can up Here, upgrade our Estus Flask again. It? So that I may help you to see light, to see hope, however faint it might be. So, do you guys all also feel like sh this uh, Emerald Herald actually says some weird things? She sounds positive, but somehow a bit creepy and uh, ominous. So one more bit of preparation I'd like to do before we head on. Oh wow, I can one-shot these guys now. It does spend a lot of stamina. But it is a lot longer. There we go. Smacked him in the face. So this is gonna be fine. So, in the crossbow room there was actually a ladder down here and there was an opening in the wall. Uh, I'm actually gonna go down here first and kill that one guy. There we go. <laughs> this is ridiculous that I can one-shot these. And another life gem. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Whack. Whack. That was not a one-shot. Oh my god, that was not a one-shot. Well, we have plenty of Vestas, so let's just deal with that like this. And then we have this ugly face in the wall, and we can use a Pharaoh's Lockstone on it. Now what that does is a variety of things, because Pharaohs of course made many contraptions, but this one shows you the way to a hidden wall. So if you hit this, that disappears, and we get to chests, and I think is one of these booby trapped? No, this one isn't. So there we have a Titanite slab, which is amazing, so that's the highest upgrade material you can get, and it's actually way too uh, easy to get, and way too early to actually get as well. And then this one doesn't seem to be booby-trapped either. The Chloranty Ring, which is a very, very important ring. But I'm wondering if I can actually equip it. It's 0.2, so I can actually equip it. So it increases my stamina recovery. 
So uh, it actually does quite a bit on that front. So uh, that's an important upgrade I wanted to get. So back in the sunken city of Haid, in the uh, Tower of Flame, the dragon is actually permanently dead if you're wondering. So uh, once you kill it, it's gone for the can. But we killed the old dragon slayer in one go, so that's fine. And the, um, the miracle saleswoman is also gone. But next up, we're going to head over here. But we're going to wait until the next episode. I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Look at the high night just coming after me there. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And when we get back, we're going to go down into the lower depths of the city of Hade. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And hope to see you guys in the next episode of Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Goodbye.